3, which is about rational exponents and radicals. Okay. So, first off, the word rational is referring to rational numbers. Remember, rational numbers are all those numbers which can be written as fractions. All right, that's what we mean by rational. So, as we saw, all integer exponents are actually rational exponents. But that's not the interesting part. The interesting part is when these are actually fractions. So for instance, what happens when we take seven to the one half power? What does that actually mean? Or what does it mean if we take, let's say 64 to the one half power? Let me start with the 64 example, okay? A one-half power still is an exponent, so it still has to obey our exponent rules. If we think about 7 to the one-half or 64 to the one-half, if you multiply those two things together, that's the product rule. And that forces us to add exponents. So you get seven to the first power, or just seven. 64 to the one half times 64 to the one half. Gotta be 64. So a one half power means that number multiplied times itself will get us back to the base. A one-half power means that number multiplied times itself will get us back to the base. Now, in this example with the 64, what number times itself gets us to 64? Well, obviously eight, right? So 64 to the one-half power is eight because eight times eight is 64. With seven, that's a little harder. With seven, we ask, well, what is a number that's gonna multiply times itself and get it to seven? Well, That number is going to be the square root of seven, the thing we call the square root of seven. Root, square root means it's the number which I square and I get seven. So the number that I square and get seven, that's what seven to the one half means, okay? And we'll spoil, a little bit of what we have. We'll often use the that notation where we have the square root symbol with seven underneath of it. And this square root symbol is the idea of the radical. All right, the radical is the square root symbol. We'll get to that in just a moment. But that's what really fractional exponents are doing. They're saying, what time is what gets me to this number? Now, that's the one half exponent. If we had something like, oh, let me do this way, 125 to the one third power, what's that mean? If we had a denominator of three, I can do the same kind of logic. I'm asking what's the number that if I take it times itself three times, it 
gives me 125. This is called the either the cube root, cube for three. cubed root of 125. By the way, in that case, it's five. Five times five times five gets me 125. Okay. So that's the concept of fractional exponents. Now, we do need to be a little bit worrisome. These are all nice positive numbers. We had positive fractional exponents and all that kind of stuff. But in the case of negatives, we have to be a little bit careful. Let's say I have negative eight to the one third power or negative 16 to the one half power. When I have negative eight to the one third power, I'm saying I want a number that I can multiply three times in a row and get out a negative eight, right? A number that I multiply three times and get out negative eight. Well, there is a number that I can multiply three times to get a negative eight. If I multiply negative two times negative two times negative two, I end up with negative eight. Because of negative times negative gives me positive, times another negative gives me a negative. However, in the case where we're talking about negative 16 to the one half power, I have a number, I'm looking for a number times another number, which gives me a negative. There is no real number. that satisfies that. Because if I have a positive number times positive, I'm gonna get a positive. But if I have a negative times a negative, I get a positive as well. So there's no real number that has that property that I can multiply A times A and get 16. All right, get a negative 16, excuse me. So that's basically what a fractional exponent is. Let me write that down in an official way. Let's say we are going to examine A, one over N. If A is positive, which just means greater than or equal to, or I should say greater than zero is positive, it could also be zero. If A is zero or positive, then a one over n is equal to b. B is positive as well, such that b to the n is equal to a. Okay barely got it on that board. If 
A is negative and the N is an odd number, then it's basically the same thing. A 1 over N is equal to B, which is actually going to be negative in this case. Such that B to the N is equal to A. If A is negative and N is even, then A to the 1 over N is not a real number. So if A is negative and N is even, then A to the 1 over N is not a real number. Okay. Those are our basic three cases for rational exponents. Okay. Now, I do want to specify, I did use the positive version because if you think about it a little bit, there are some cases, let's just take... Um, 25 to the one half. You say what times what gives me 25? You should say five. That's the obvious case. But also negative five times negative five also gives you 25. So when you have a positive base, we always use the positive um, value where you square it and get five. Or excuse me, square it and get 25. So we always use the positive square root is what it's called. And anytime we have even numbers here, you can either put the positive or negative here, but we always put the positive. You always assume it's the positive square root or the positive fourth root or the positive sixth root if there are those other things. So that's what fractional exponents do. Your calculator actually deals with fractional exponents really, really nicely. So if you want to deal with fractional exponents, by all means, just you can always type in your calculator. All right. Let me get a good example of this. If I take negative 32 to the 1 fifth power, I could just type into my calculator. In parentheses, negative 32, outside to the one-fifth power. Now, be careful. When you put in this exponent um, with the standard notation, if you do 1 divided by 5, order of operations is going to do the exponent first of 1, and then divide your answer by 5. So you want 1 divided by 5 to be in parentheses. All right, you want your exponent to be in parentheses if you have this type of notation. If you have the math print notation, it's not that big of a deal. But calculator is going to handle fractional exponents as long as you put the exponents in parentheses when you type them in. All right, that is the same with the TI-30 as well. And by the way, if we do something like 7 to the 1 half power, like we had earlier, it's just going to give us the decimal version of that square root rounded to however many places it rounds it to. So that's just the decimal version of that square root. All right. Anything else to say? I want to say this. If you're dealing with fractional exponents, we've done fractional exponents just on numbers so far. 
But all of the things that we've dealt with earlier, all of the rules that we've dealt with earlier, also apply to fractional exponents. So if I'm trying to solve something like, or simplify, 64z to the 12th, y to the 9th, and I take all of that to the one-third power. This is a power rule scenario. So I can apply that exponent to the 64. I'll write it in the middle steps. Apply that exponent to the 64. Apply that exponent to the z to the 12th and apply that exponent to y to the ninth. This I can just type into my calculator and get a four. 64 to the one third is a four. Make sure, again, you put your fraction in parentheses. Z to the 12th to the one third. Well, this is a power rule again, one third times 12. Right, we multiply exponents. One third times 12 is a four. So I get z to the fourth. And then one third times nine is going to be three. So you're going to get four, z to the fourth, y to the third. And that's the simplified version of that. Also, the same thing works if I don't have a numerator that's just one. If I have a numerator that's two or three or four, it doesn't matter. You can utilize all of the same rules with any exponent. So if I took, um, uh, let's take 30, to z to the 10th and raise that to the 3 fifths power. You'd say same kind of concept that we just did here. 32 to the 3 fifths power z to the 10th to the 3 fifths power Apply the three fifths to the 32. When I say apply, type in your calculator. Three fifths, 30, me, 32 to the power three fifths, making sure that three fifths is in parentheses. You should end up with an A. Z to the 10th to the three fifths. We need to use the power of multiplying exponents. 10 times 3 fifths gives us a 6. So you get z to the 6. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's the concept of using fractional exponents with expressions, with variables, with numbers. All right. By the way, if you think about what three-fifths actually means as a fractional exponent, I know we did um, one-fifth or one-third, one-half earlier. But if I take 32 to the three-fifths, what I'm looking for It's something that multiplied by itself five times gives me 32. Well, one of those is a one-fifth. Three-fifths is three of those. So I'm looking for the number that I cubed where that number multiplied times itself five times gives me 35. And obviously this number is two in this case. So two 
times itself five times gives me 32. And then I take two to the third power, and that's where I got the 80 from, or that's where the calculator derived the 8 from. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. So in some sense, 32 to the 3 fifths is like take 32 to the 1 fifth power and cube it. 32 to the 1 fifth power is a number. You raise to the fifth power, I get 32, that's 2. And then we're cubing that, which is where the 8 comes from. Again, this is not, uh, hopefully that's not too crazy. Hopefully that's not too crazy. 